Ah uh, yes, Atlas. The game probably most famous for its amazing trailer, but it proved to be a complete mess at launch. People wanted a pirate swashbuckling adventure, and instead it ended up looking exactly as the trailer vs reality video by Blackbird on YouTube made it out. You start on an ugly island with no idea of what to do, and then proceed to die from either lack of vitamins or just a slight overdose, or stealing with overwhelming rubber banding. So why would I be making a video about playing it in 2024? Well, let me tell you about my history with Atlas. I was one of the few that kept playing it through that horrendous rubber banding on the Freeport starting islands. You see, actually, Atlas sold so many copies on launch, it went crazy. And the devs were not in the slightest prepared for the amount of players that would spawn onto those islands, which in turn caused such terrible performance. Even today, I would say the servers would struggle with those numbers. And that was it for a lot of players. They either refunded within the hour and never played the game again, or tried it for a few days to find the game didn't get to the fun parts fast enough. And I think that last part still applies for a lot of people. It doesn't hit you with the fun stuff quite as fast as, say, another pirate game, Sea of Thieves does. So for those of you that didn't spend too long in Atlas or didn't even try it for yourselves, let me break the game down for you quickly as to what happens when you get off one of the starter islands, the free ports. So simply put, you sail to another island, you find some space, hopefully can be tricky sometimes, especially on official. You build a nice base and then you get to building your own ship. This is where the fun actually starts. Building your own ship piece by piece is great and very enjoyable for most players. It's actually the highlight of a lot of players' games. You then sail the seas, find a crew, team up with others, maybe friends, and fight against the many bosses Atlas now has to offer. Now, instead of just the old two bosses for every power island being either the Drake or the Hydra, which I know many people are used to, you also have to fight a powerful fire elemental, a sentinel cyclops, an oversized crystal scorpion, a huge rock elemental, a giant boar, a beastly croc, and a brightly colored colossal crab. I think that is all of them, if I can remember it right. Collect the key from each boss, and then unlock the power stone in each specific grid. With all power stones locked into your mythical compass, this allows you to take on the main Kraken boss and also enter into the Ice Yeti's lair. It's a great adventure in itself, with every boss needing slightly different ways or methods to take them down. Move on to defeat the Kraken, but know that this is only the first easy version. And the easy version, or version 1, V1 as most players call it, unlocks the mythical submarine and with the power of mythos farmed from the corpses of mythical creatures and bosses you can go deep into the depths of atlas's power grids into the trenches this time to retrieve each essence nothing too difficult about this stage just dive down in the submarine that you can build after beating the first kraken find the essence podiums and interact with them to retrieve them once all nine essences have been completed, your mythical compass power stones will now all shine brightly. And then you can go back and take on the harder Nightmare Kraken or Kraken V2, as most people call it. Defeating this boss basically completes the main PvE content of the game, offering, I would say, at least 40 hours of gameplay as you aim for a decent ship, stats, crew and skills especially when taking on that second harder Kraken. It's a cycle that I have completed many times now over a few seasons playing and something that has become somewhat of a tradition for me and a group of friends over a few years. I love the sense of adventure, the open world, sailing using the wind, the building of the ships itself, the way it challenges you with the many bosses now and in general the Atlas world. It's got a certain rustic feel to it that I like and I kind of prefer over Ark. Well, there is a problem 
And for me, it lies with the official servers and the direction the devs have pushed them in. Almost like a standby mode whilst they work on their main title arc. Instead of having a large map, 15 by 15 grids like the game used to have originally on PvE, they've shrunk it down to a measly 6x6 for multiple seasons now. This felt a bit small for me and my company, so only last year we decided to look for some unofficial servers. And I'm happy to say here there are many different well-run servers offering loads of extra gameplay through mods and even a larger map once again with more grids. You can find roleplay servers, PvP servers, and in our case what suited us was a large-scale PvE server also offering PvP for when you want to participate. In the end, a friend found a server by the name of Gaming Evolved, ran by a Joe Swanson and his team of admins. The server gave us everything we were looking for and more. A huge map once again, back to the original 15 by 15 grid. A great selection of mods, including the Klinger mods made by Arctatos, I think I'm saying that right. He's a brilliant mod designer for Atlas, and he also does Arc and Arc Ascended. I really don't think he gets enough credit. He's got some crazy good mods that he's designed. And even on the server, we have some specific mods for the server made by Joe and I, maybe some of the other admins help him out. I'm not sure there. But these mods offer a replacement of the standard items, switching them out for better gaming evolved versions. He's also added a load of extra creatures from the art game side of things and made practically all of them, including the originals that were already in the game, Tameable. You can even permanently tame a drake on this server if you want to. On top of that, the admins and consistent players really do go above and beyond with the server events like boat shows, treasure hunts, special PvP ship battles, kangaroo football and more. More in the sense that they've even created a shopping mall for the server to buy anything that you like. Mostly player company driven, but built and monitored by the admins every season here you can get items blueprints and even tames you can also run your own shop and sell your goods and bread tames to other players for the main game currency evolved goat and mythos which you earn from killing those bosses a shop is really easy to set up for any company that joins the server and it really adds to the gameplay for me i love making a shop trading with others and being part of the community a real plus for the server i think and something I haven't seen in too many games before. Further to the benefits of an unofficial server, specifically with Game of Evolved here, you can even earn an extra currency called Egoat on the server, which generates over time, and you can use it then to buy tames, materials, or even ships. Here's a list of the server settings in case some of you guys want to check it out too, and I'll put the website in the description, and maybe I'll see you guys on there. So that's the gist of what Atlas is like when you play some unofficial servers. And like I say, there are a few great ones. So check out topgameservers.net. That's normally where you vote for your favorite server. And then you can see the top ones on there. And depending on what you like to play, maybe roleplay, PvP or PvE, there is definitely an option there for you. With that said, let's talk about some of the other things that are key things that you see and do in Atlas that I know some people don't like or have slight problems with. We'll start here with the damned ships, the main enemy ships that you'll be facing in Atlas. And damned ships still look like glowing luxury yachts. They're color coded by difficulty. Yes, yeah, since the beginning of Atlas, I have heard people say, I wish they would make the damned ships look better, more realistic like pirate ships. And there is even a boss ship in game, another piece of content that you can do and defeat. This is called the ghost ship, which is exactly like the normal galleon with a ghostly aura around it. It disappears during the day, it can't be attacked, but comes out at night for you to fight. Very simple in design and it, it looks great. And I share the opinion that the damn ships could look better and giving them the ghost ship treatment, even keeping their same color aura that they have now depending on level would still work in this way. I've seen mods that make or change them into simple ship versions, and these are definitely better from a visual point of view. 
And when fighting against proper ships, you can, of course, chain shot the sails or light them on fire. But with just the damn ships, it's simply pure damage, kill, and collect the box they leave behind. It's not very entertaining and not as fun. So that's the damned ships. And unfortunately, they are still the same. I'm not sure they're going to change anytime soon. So that's, that's a kind of a negative point, but we'll see how it goes in the future. And maybe using a mod can fix that. And I think there are a few servers that do change them out and add different variants. So moving on to another point. I know turned a lot of players off Atlas originally, and that was taming. I will say here, tames and taming creatures is still a fairly important part of the game, allowing you to collect resources quicker, build your ships faster, and beat certain bosses easier. Taming is, however, different on Atlas than it is on Ark. Now, for the most part, you use a taming barrow with the favorite food and a narcotic mushroom pit most creatures in a docile state so they can be easier tamed. Some on the game in the Vogue server are classed as tier 4 tames and you still need to use a bola or a few and manually feed them but overall I actually prefer it to the standard trank tames that a lot of people are used to from Ark. The problem here for most people who originally wanted to play Atlas is they wanted a pirate game not Ark with ships. I, on the other hand, do like that you can tame a load of things, especially on the Game of Oath server, and then you can turn them into beastie mounts for whatever purpose you need. Coming from Ark, it's just always been part of that game, taming and breeding. So with Atlas, I don't mind it at all. And for me, it just adds to the content overall. But I can completely understand if you don't want to do the taming or breeding side of things, you just want to sail around, fight the damn ships, and kill those boss creatures. The good thing about unofficial servers like the Game and Evolve one is you don't need to tame. You get a certain amount of ego, the currency I mentioned earlier, that you just get from being on the server. And uh, you even start with a decent amount. I think it was around about 10,000. And you can just buy a few farming tames with that. And then you can build your ships and crack on with the content that you actually want to play. Of course, the other option and something you should always do anyway is to place a load of farming structures around your base. You've got mines for metal, lumber yards for wood, etc. And then these will send everything they gather over time back to your warehouse as long as they were, are within the radius. Been in the game for a while now and definitely handy for accumulating materials as long as you keep them fueled up. So that makes it not too bad for the players who don't want to tame stuff. And personally, I wouldn't mind those farming structures in Ark as well. So I think it's a plus for Atlas on that point. The next issue I've often heard was not enough choice for ship building. With Atlas, you've always had your set ships, the raft, which barely anyone uses anymore, the sloop, the schooner, the brig, and the galleon. You could build on top of those basic designs and then make them your own. So I've never really been too bothered as I feel I can make a ship different enough. But for those of you that do like a bit more choice with mods on official, especially that Klinger mod that I mentioned earlier, you can build ships like the Caraca, the Corsair variants of the normal ships, and more recently added the huge powerhouse ship of the line. All great additions to the game for you to build there. On Game of Evolved, there is even multiple Evolved variants of the standard ships offering you cargo, rambler or battle versions depending on preference or use so you can see on this point how unofficial really is the way to go the devs did add modular ships for a few seasons but in general these were disliked and only really used when they glitched and gave us super speed even in bad wind conditions then i remember everyone literally everyone was using them <laughs> moving on to another point how about vitamin balance well veterans of Atlas barely think about vitamins anymore, but I know it was a real annoyance for people who first started playing. You need four vitamins, A, B, C, and D, in general, according to color. The yellow one is veg, the red is meat, orange is berries, and the basic one for blue is fish. There are actually loads of different foods to help you balance these to a good level, where you can gain vitamin equilibrium so they don't bother you for some time and also give a temporary boost to your stats. Multiple recipes are available to craft to make these even easier to manage, and more so on unofficial servers. A good tip I want to mention is make sure to put points into Fortitude, 
And also in the skill tree, there are vitamin depletion skills in there for you. So you don't have to focus on it much at all. Basically, once you level up a bit and get at least the four basic foods, you only have to eat every so often. And then don't worry about it for most of the time that you are playing. So on the next point, let's talk about loading times. And yes, Atlas still suffers with terrible loading times, just like the old arc did in the older Unreal Engine. This can be improved with modern technology by installing the game on a fast M.2 NVMe SSD in your PC or the fastest possible one that you can install in your console. But in general, I do think that you need the M.2 SSD. Then it is a lot more bearable, especially going from grid to grid sailing around as each grid needs to load in as you go through it. You don't want to be spending ages on the loading screens, so you need those fast drives in order to enjoy the game more. I think a lot of games nowadays need you to install it on the fastest drive possible. There's some huge files and I think there's a lot to load up in Atlas. So I just think that's standard gaming in uh, 2024 now. And uh, like the only thing I would say is the Unreal 5 engine does make a big difference. So maybe we'll get that in the future. So those there are a few points oh, yeah, that I remember I people you, mentioning in reviews about Atlas. But further to that, let's talk about game versus original trailer. The biggest point people will talk about with Atlas is they didn't get the game that was advertised. Now, I would actually argue everything that's in the original extended gameplay trailer even is achievable. There's more to do than was shown there now, even if you do only play on official. So it has come away from, it's come a long way from the original launch and it is a fully playable game now and there's a lot more to do. Still, if you want extra events and built up islands that you can see in the trailer, then you're probably going to have to look for these unofficial servers once again. Shopping malls, kangaroo football, arenas, treasure hunts, a lot more. Yeah, you're going to have to look for those unofficial servers. So that to me is where the game is at in general. In my opinion, it's still one of the best sailing games available currently. It's very impressive in PvP. And works great for PvE too. That's mainly what I play. And there's plenty to do in game for the current price tag. You get your money's worth if you play through all it has to offer. As mentioned before, I would say 40 to 60 hours of gameplay. If you're going to complete all the Power Stones, Essences and beat the Nightmare Kraken and Yeti Cave. There's more if you like to do other stuff like taming breeding creatures. And more still, if you hit up one of the top unofficial servers that are available. I'm sure you can find one that fits your gameplay style. As always, this game is going to be a lot more fun with friends or like-minded people. I currently play with four other guys in my company. And running through the content this season has been an absolute blast once again. And just to mention the community, most people are normally very helpful and welcoming to new players. My hopes for Atlas in the future is that it starts getting some support again from the devs. Currently would seem all hands have gone back to Arc with the updated release of Arc Ascended in the Unreal 5 engine. And I guess sometime in the future, I hope Atlas will get the same treatment. I know it would look phenomenal in the new engine. It would greatly reduce those loading times, which are quite a pain. And I'm sure if they did something like this with Atlas, they would also look at quality of life changes within the official servers and general gameplay to improve it more. But still with that said, right now there is a great game to play. No, it's not quite the pirate game we might have all wanted it to be originally, but there is quite an adventure to be had in Atlas. And I think if you haven't played it in a while or never give it a chance, it's definitely worth another try in 2024. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you are a long time player or a veteran of Atlas, tell others in the comments what you love about the game. Maybe I've missed something you think new or returning players might like to know. Any questions about the game, feel free to ask. Leave a comment, maybe ahoy there, just so YouTube sees some engagement on the video. Like and subscribe for more videos from me. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.